Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone is one of my favourite movies of all time and as a big fan of Lego I decided to recreate the film with one big Lego model. This Lego model will showcase five of the most iconic scenes in the movie from start to finish. Now one of the most iconic moments from the start of the first Harry Potter movie is the shot of Harry living in a small cupboard under the stairs of the Dursleys home. Especially the scene where Dudley is jumping on the stairs trying to wake Harry up. It really puts across the point that Harry is being oppressed here. Now with these models, because I'm making five of them, I'm going to challenge myself to make them all on a 6x6 stud surface, which should force me to use some creative building techniques to get the shapes that I want. Starting with the characters for this scene, we have Harry Potter with his baggy blue shirt, Dudley Dursley, he's going to be busy jumping on the stairs, and Aunt Petunia, the tallest of the three, to make sure Harry doesn't get a lie in. For the model itself, I'm going to lay down a turquoise coloured carpet which continues up the stairs. I'm going to use this nice wedge plate to better replicate the bottom step. I also think we need a back wall, and looking at this wallpaper here, it's quite a complex pattern, but thankfully I found the perfect piece to use which appeared in an old school expensive Lego Batman set. I think we should also add a little clock on the wall, don't you think? Now time for the banister. This build is simple enough thanks to the use of these little white slope pieces. Now let's add the door to the cupboard which will use this great piece and there you go. I think we've managed to capture the scene really well considering the scale we're confined to. But the next model is going to be so much harder and that's because we're going to try and build the Hogwarts Express on this single plate. Yeah, this is going to be difficult. We're going to start off with the boiler on the front section of the train. For the wheels I decided to make use of these roller skate pieces, which to me look like mini train wheels. The rest of the boiler was simple enough, but it took me a little while to figure out how to replicate the train's funnel. But I found just a piece for the job. Turns out, Lego feathers make great smoke. On Sunday the 19th of November, I'm going to be doing 10 LEGO Harry Potter giveaways. That includes all of these. All you've got to do to take part is turn up on my next live stream. That's it. My next live stream will be taking place on Whatnot, which if you haven't heard of it, is basically like eBay and Twitch combined. It's a live auction site where you can bid on things in real time while interacting with others. So what am I going to be auctioning? I'm going to be auctioning over 200 LEGO High Potter minifigures, as well as some rare classic LEGO High Potter sets as well. And the best part is I'm going to be starting everything at just one dollar. Don't worry, you don't have to buy anything to take part in my giveaway. But if you are interested in the auction, make sure to use my special link to sign up to Whatnot, which instantly gives you $15 free credit to use on my live stream to bag yourself some free LEGO High Potter minifigures. By the way guys, all 10 giveaways are international so you can take part from anywhere in the world and you don't even have to pay postage either. Just make sure to turn up to my live stream on Sunday the 19th of November at 7pm UK time. I'll see you there. For the coal car and passenger car it was quite simple of course and there we have it, a mini Lego Hogwarts Express. Issue is, it's still too long if you have it straight, so instead of making a small model of the train parked at King's Cross train station, I decided to make the model of the train crossing the viaduct bridge, which would allow me to display the train at a curved angle, which allows me to fit the train on a 6x6 plate. And to be honest, the train crossing the viaduct bridge is a far more iconic scene in my eyes anyway. Now making the viaduct bridge wasn't too difficult, thanks to this new piece which just came out in the new LEGO Icons Corvette set. I would be screwed without this piece. What we need to do now though is some of the landscaping around the bridge. Now I've never done mini LEGO landscaping before but I can tell you it was a lot of fun. I first added different levels of terrain throughout the plate area and made some different mini tree designs and scattered them about the model without forgetting to add a small stream of course because you just have to. And the way this little model turned out I am so impressed with. Now moving into the middle of the movie we get to Harry's first Quidditch match and obviously the iconic way he managed to catch his first snitch by standing on his broom and nearly swallowing the snitch. Now if I were to recreate this scene in Lego I'd have to make use of these clip pieces to suspend the broomsticks in midair, so that's what I did. I built the ground sideways as opposed to the more traditional method of building upwards which allowed me to include some clip pieces protruding out of the ground, to which I attached this brown root piece which looks an awful lot like a broomstick with a mini Harry figure clipped on top. 
All we need now is the golden snitch suspended in front of him. And thankfully, I know just the parts to make that work. Perfect. Now I'm going to add the Slytherin Seeker, Terence Higgs, who's not that far behind Harry. And of course, we need some sort of spectator tower standing tall behind the players to complete the scene. Starting with the Gryffindor Tower, these headlight pieces make great little openings at the top. Then Slytherin, of course. Hufflepuff. And finally, Ravenclaw. Two more models to go now and we're about to get into what is my favourite model, Fluffy's Encounter. Now you may be thinking, how on earth is it possible to make a three headed dog at this small scale? Well I figured it out, and no it wasn't easy. Starting with the feet, I used these penguin beaks in black, with some stud pieces to fill out the leg section. Now onto the tricky bit which was the three heads, and to make it work I made use of a piece which only appeared in a Minecraft set. And that's these Minecraft bat eyes on a small 1x1 one one plate piece. And they were perfect for this mini Lego fluffy model. For the ears I used these Lego clip pieces. And for the mouth and nose area I used a bracket to hold this antenna holder piece. Which when you take out the antenna itself you are left with this small black dome. Which works well for Fluffy's ickle nosy. <laughs> I even made sure he has a tail as well. And yeah, I think this little guy came out great. Now obviously we need to create the chamber around him and I did that using these tan coloured plates and arches going over Fluffy which gives the effect of a ceiling slash back wall. I also added some small fires lit at the back which I think looks great, not forgetting the trap door that Fluffy is guarding and also the golden harp left by Professor Quirrell which he used to put Fluffy asleep. And we can't forget the infamous trio who set off to stop Krill in the first place, Harry, Ron and Hermione. If you're enjoying this video so far then make sure to like the video and subscribe as we're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. Thanks a lot. Now on to the final model we of course have Harry's final challenge against Professor Quirrell and I had so much fun designing this model. I actually started this one off with making both Harry and Quirrell. Harry's nothing special but with Quirrell I managed to find a purple ball piece which attaches to any stud so that's what I'm using for his turban and I think they both came out great. I then started to construct the room itself making sure to include the steps on either side as well as all the pillars. For the pillars I decided to use candlesticks and a dark tan colour as my first idea was using these Lego tin can pieces which I thought ended up looking a bit too thick. I then went ahead and got a load of transparent orange and yellow coloured parts to make the ring of fire which blocks off Harry's exit at the end of the movie. Then all that's left is to throw in a philosopher's stone and also the mirror of Erised. To do this I used a gold coloured bracket piece with a Lego cheese slope piece on top with a nice smooth shiny silver piece at the front and then there you have Harry's final challenge. Now like I said at the start of this video I wanted all five of these models to be incorporated together in one big Lego model which showcases all of these iconic moments from the first Harry Potter movie. And to help me do that I'm going to construct a nice quality stand making sure to tile off wherever I go to ensure it's nice and smooth. I also used a lot of these metallic gold ingot pieces to give off a more premium feel as well as this printed Lego Harry Potter plaque at the front. And now all that's left is to place the five models on the stand, starting with the cupboard under the stairs, the journey to Hogwarts, Harry's first snitch, Fluffy's encounter, and Harry's final challenge. And with that, I'll see you next time.